Welcome to the cave. I'm Daniel Phillips of the Mishawaka Network, and we've got a new face with us, or a new voice rather, because you're not going to see us on screen. Will Mason here, fellow Mishawa or a Mishawaka wrestler and football player here. Uh, Will, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, I'm Will Mason. I'm a sophomore at Mishawaka High School. Uh, I do wrestling. I didn't get to participate this year, so I helped out with Mishawaka Network. So I did a little bit of over the mic on that, but now we're back to it because you got nothing to do during the spring. So we're just on to this. All right, well, yeah, we're, we're happy to have you. Um, and uh, it's going to be a good one. We're just going to deliver a little pre-game report for you listeners out there. Kind of uh, kind of give you a little uh, stat line for everything that's going on right now. We've got South Bend St. Joe facing off against the Mishawaka Cavemen. St. Joe currently does not have a mascot as they are leaving their prior mascot, the Indians, behind and currently still figuring out which direction they're going to go in next. But let's talk basketball for a second. Mishawaka, Will, both you and I saw them play. You were in the student section. I was up here working. We saw Mishawaka came in, face off against the Penn Kingsmen. They fell by five points to a final score of 52 to 47. A heartbreaker because backyard brawl in any sport is always big. Oh, Mishawaka yeah, Penn matchup, always huge. Always one of the biggest ones in the 574 area. You just hear about it, you know, but it was a close game. It was always back and forth. Just they had that upper edge. They had a great fourth quarter, I think, and that's what got them the win. Yeah, no doubt. There was a moment where the Cavemen were down by about 14 points. They kind of clawed their way back, and then a few turnovers and missed shots ended up resulting in a loss for them, making their final, making their record on the season 15-7. to This is what they're going into this contest into. Let's talk about St. Joe a little bit. St. Joe, their their record right now on the season is 15 and eight. They rank number four in the NIC. They came off. They just come off of a huge win, a 98 to 57 win over the Plymouth Rockies on Wednesday. So they're feeling good. They're they're on a. Uh, I'm not sure what win streak they're on right now, but I know coming off a win is always nice in any sport you play. So they're a little confident. They've been playing well. Uh, they've been blowing out some teams. Well, they've been playing some very good basketball this month and the month prior. So they're definitely going into this one very confident, very at ease. But Mishawaka came in. We talked about pregame. Well, they are no team to sleep on, especially on the defensive end. We saw that the Penn game was pretty low scoring, high scoring for a game of those two teams, but still under just barely over 50 points. Not something you see a lot in high school basketball. So... A huge game here. Two very good teams. Pretty polished records. Some great players on both sides of the court. But yeah, well, what are you looking forward to most in this matchup? Uh, I'm Mishawaka basketball is all about defense. I feel like they always have great defensive games. And them, uh, St. Joe putting up I think 98, you said it was? Like, yep. That's a lot of points for a high school basketball game. But I think Mishawaka will hold them. Uh, do a lower scoring performance. I'm watching right now. They do have some shooters, it looks like. So, But I think Mishawaka is going to play a great defensive game. But I think it's going to be a great game, to be honest. Yeah, no doubt. I completely agree, Will. I'm hoping to see a good contest. We saw a good one on Tuesday. Penn-Mishawaka, as we said, is always going to be a fun matchup. But this one's going to be fun as well. Not as much of a history, not, a, not as personal as a, the game on Tuesday night, but still we got a packed student section almost. It's Hawaiian theme tonight. Looking forward to a last regular season home game, last regular season game, but uh, got a big one here. Let's talk about sectionals right now. Sectionals are coming up. The Mishawaka Cavemen, they'll be facing off against the LaPorte Slicers on Tuesday, next Tuesday here at 6.30, I believe. And the gym, our six o'clock scratch that. And then the second game was at seven thirty. Seven thirty. We'll both be here at the cave. Yes, yes. Michigan City will be facing off against the Plymouth Rockies here at seven thirty. Again, we said six at six a, uh, six p.m. sharp. We will be facing. Can I correct you on that? They're the Pilgrims. Pilgrims, Pilgrims, Pilgrims. You're right. I'm sorry about that. The Rockies and the Pilgrims. They've got two name, two mascots. They're the Rockies for football. Wrestling and soccer. Wrestling and soccer. And then we've got pilgrims for everything else, including girls and boys basketball. So 
Thank you for the correction, Will. I know I kind of get that mixed up sometimes. So the Pilgrims will be facing off against the Michigan City Wolves at 7.30, and the Cavemen will play the Poor Slicers at 6 p.m. sharp here in the cave on Tuesday night. So they've got a good one. And, uh, Will, do you happen to remember who they will play if they beat the Laporte Slicers? Um, I'm going to get no. that for you here shortly. Yep. But uh, I know the Cavemen are looking to go back-to-back. -back. They won their first sectional championship in 37 years last year. A big win. They're well, very excited about that. Mishawaka will play South Bend Adams if they win that game. Got it. And then St. Joe will play... They have to buy the first round. They'll play either Washington or Mishawaka Marion for their first match of the sectional. So Two very good teams there. Yeah. And coming in with the one seed is always nice. And I feel like this is a huge game for both teams going into the sectional. You don't want to go in into the state run going with a loss. That's just not a good – well, if you go in with a loss and you lose again, then you're done. So you don't want right. that to happen. Yeah. So going in with the win – would always be a good confidence boost, morale boost for the whole system. So I think that's pretty big. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I completely agree. Confidence is always a huge thing in every single sport, almost every single thing you do. But sports being a big one, when you're confident, then you get hot, then nobody can stop you. So it's a great place to be. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and play our five-minute commissioner's corner featuring IHSAA Commissioner Paul Nydick. Again, it'll be five minutes, and then play a few ads, and then we'll hand it over to our WSBT crew with Ron and Klinsky and Brian Miller. We will see you later at halftime. Now for Commissioner's Corner. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Nidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, Here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Nighting. Welcome into the Commissioner's Corner. I'm Brendan King in for the Coach Bob Lovell, who is enjoying some vacation time this week. And it is a very special guest with us on the Commissioner's Corner. Be it the Assistant Commissioner of the IHSAA, Janie Ulmer, is with us taking some time on CC today. Janie, really appreciate the time and what I know is a busy time for you all at the IHSAA. Wrapping up last weekend with the Wrestling State Finals and jumping into a whole lot this coming weekend we'll touch on that in a minute but just to recap things down at evansville how did everything roll with the wrestling state finals you know what it was an amazing event it was actually my first time being at wrestling state finals i was there on friday and the energy was still in the place lots of excitement from the athletes to the coaches to the community uh, families it, it was a really exciting place to be on friday uh, obviously we were in evansville and then on saturday we had another day of state finals and then we also had semi-state girls basketball right well i mean busy month in general for sure Janie omer the assistant commissioner of the ihsaa is with us Janie, i know it took some extra planning just because a little event called the nba all-star game was in indianapolis and that's where we usually had the wrestling state finals but for you how was evansville as as a host they were so welcoming and so uh just just a great uh event place to be they were honored to have us uh you know they made every accommodation that they could and it, it was a great event well, diving into what's coming up this weekend, Janie, first of all, the IHSAA Girls Basketball State Finals. I know the boys swimming and diving finals are coming up as well. Let's touch on that first, and you could talk about the logistics of the swimming and diving finals. Absolutely. So, as you know, Indiana is a great swimming and diving state all across the country. We have some of the best athletes, and so we are pretty excited, again, to be able to host our both boys swimming and diving at the IU Natatorium, which is nationally recognized for its facility. So that's very cool. Uh, Carrie Rosati is in charge of boys swimming and diving, and she's been working with those teams and those coaches and those athletes to get prepared for Friday and Saturday. The Assistant Commissioner of the IHSAA, Janie Ulmer, with us on the Commissioner's Corner. I'm Brendan King, and for Coach Bob Lovell. Janie, I'm sure this weekend, too, especially means a lot to you after you played at LaPorte High School. I think you were also an assistant coach there based off what I read. First of all, just the girls' basketball state finals. As a former player, as a former coach, now as an administrator in the IHSAA, what does this all boil down to, and what does it mean to you? You know, it means so much to me, especially because right now there seems to be an energy all across the state on female sports and especially girls basketball. Uh, today, just this morning, we met with our top eight teams that will be competing on Saturday at Cambridge Fieldhouse. 
And, you know, it was pretty exciting to be in the place that the All-Stars just competed in on Sunday. And then we have this world-class basketball facility for our girls' state finals this coming Saturday. So we're walking through the gym thinking, okay, there's some pretty great athletes that have played here, and we get to host our event. So that's been exciting. I do want to thank Indiana Fever, Indiana Pacers, Pacers Sports Entertainment, and our Indiana Basketball Coaches Association because we're doing something a little different this year. On Friday, on the day of practice, In the middle of the day, they are hosting and sponsoring a luncheon for us at Cambridge Fieldhouse Mm -hmm. to highlight these eight teams, their coaches, and just to celebrate girls' sports in general. So that's a new thing we're adding this year, and uh, the, the girls seemed really excited about it. That's awesome, and I know how special it is to play in a facility like that. But you know, Jenny, I'm from Illinois, and you know that's something that we did not have in playing in these world class facilities over there. So I'm sure, whenever the athletes come up to you, whether it's media day today or a little bit later on this week, I I could imagine you see the glow in their eyes every single year based on they get to play in these amazing places. You know, they really do. And and the the teams brought one or two players today to be a part of a little video that we're putting together and to see their eyes as they walk on that floor. And Cambridge does a great job of welcoming us because they have our graphics up on all their screens as those girls walk through today. So I think it felt a little more real to them. But yet it's just it's just an amazing opportunity to play there. Jenny Ulmer, the assistant commissioner of the IHSAA with us on the commissioner's corner. I'm Brendan King and for the coach Bob Lovell. Jenny, appreciate the time today. Have a terrific weekend. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the commissioner's corner with IHSAA commissioner Paul Neidig and coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nardi. Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event.
19.4 points, 9.5 rebounds, and 2.5 assists per ball game. He had 22 a year ago in this contest that Mishawaka won at St. Joe in overtime, 63-60. Rounding out the starting combination, one of the best athletes we will see all year long is 6'3 senior Jace Lee, a magnificent baseball player, averaging 15 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, and Braylon White, 6'2 sophomore, who averages 4 per game, rounds out the starting combo. Mishawaka's iron five of starters, Jackson Snyder, Cooper Pritchard, Rasan Johnson, Brady Fisher, Anthony Nelson, and the opening tip is controlled by St. Joe, and they will go on an automatic alley-oop over top of everybody, and it's laid up and in by Jace Lee. You know that was a play that was well-designed on the chalkboard and probably practiced many a times in practice, and St. Joe leads two zip. Pritchard drives right of the lane, leans in, double team back outside to Jackson Snyder. Mishawaka, we describe it, goes right to left here on the radio and for our friends on the Mishawaka Network. And they're in their home whites with the maroon trim and silver accessories. Lobb, Johnson, right of the lane. Brady down to the post, leans in against Lee, fades, fires, air ball, missed, just barely touches the twine. And the rebound, St. Joe. Indians will run with it. Barza, center floor. Jace Lee from NBA range, launches, misses. Loose ball, rebound, chick down by Brady Fisher. Long pass up the floor. Cooper Pritchett with an alley oop of the caveman own. Maybe he didn't have the high arc on it, but Rasan Johnson assists. Cooper ties it at two. Nice job. Caveman got to get some transition baskets in this game, and that's a great start for him. Deep left wing area. It is Braylon White. Hands it outside. Kineshny from three. Connects. Chase Kineshny, who averages nearly 20 a game in the 1,000 point club already, and folks, he's just a junior. High lob up the floor, Fisher to Jackson. He'll dribble the paint, double team, triple team, and he'll dribble out of traffic back to the center circle and reset the K-man offense. 5-3 St. Joe, we played 90 seconds. Snyder flips in center floor to Rasan. Rasan picked up man-to-man -man by Kimishny. He'll dribble, penetrate, backdoor bounce pass. All alone, Jackson Snyder lays it up and in. Nice feed by Rasan Johnson. Rasan took it on a little bit of a drive, got some help to come to him. 
Found the open player, Jackson Snyder. He knocks it in. 5-4 for St. Joe. Konezhny, top of the circle, defended by Rasan. There's a screen, jump pass out. Shrewsbury, three, launches, misses. Long rebound out, pulled down by Brady Fisher. Bobbled it, regained it, runs on the floor. Steps around the defender, put it up and in, but no basket. They'll call Brady Fisher for the travel. Turnover, Mishawaka. As I look to the bench area, Bodie Bender just it holding the palms down. To I slow saw it too. Slow down a little bit, get a good possession, and I mean, I like it when when the cavemen run a little bit because they get good looks. Bars that dribbles to the middle of the lane, bounce pass left side, ball deflected and knocked out of bounds. Good defense there, Brady Fisher downing or doubling down there on Braylon White with some help from one of his teammates. Brady Fisher really long at six four. Got long arms, really strong, put together well. Inbound, St. Joe. They lead it by one, 5.40 first quarter here. With Ron Heklinski, I'm Brian Miller, and glad to have you with us on the radio and on the Mishawaka Network. Dribble right the lane. Kinesh, turns, hesitates, spins, jumps, shoots, misses. Loose ball rebound on the floor. Knocked around and saved just barely from the uh, out-of-bounds area by Rasan Johnson. Gives it to the backcourt now. Jackson Steiner dribbles through traffic. Lost the handle. Ball stripped away. It is Jason Lee. He'll take it down. Going for the dunk. And he's not fouled, but has the shot blocked from behind by one of two K-Man defenders. Well, I'm surprised he, that there wasn't a foul called there. A lot of, I mean, a lot of contact. Eric but Gaff the, agrees with you. Yeah, no, no I know he does. And, and uh, Jason Lee tried to dunk that from maybe 10 feet out. Take it in. Get two, right? 5-4, St. Joe, inbounds right under the basketball, deflected by Brady and stolen by Jackson Snyder. Jackson on the push, dribbles to the right point, bounce pass to Cooper, double team, back out to Snyder. Looks for the hook pass in, nothing there, back center floor resets. Nelson, left of the lane to Rasan. Rasan top of the circle to Brady. Brady goes right side to Jackson Snyder. Five minutes to play in our first quarter, 5-4, St. Joe. Top of the circle now, shake, bake, dribble. Rasan reverses back out center floor. Top side goes to Brady, turns, fakes a spin move, in the paint, pivots, pivots, leans in, backdoor cutter, Cooper up off the rim, no and a foul. Nice back cut by Coop after uh, Brady Fisher picked that ball up. I thought he had a little up and under move when he picked it up, but found Cooper on a back cut, and uh, Cooper beat the free throw line, looking to knock a couple in here. Nick Shrewsbury picks up his first foul, games first for any of the two teams. And at the free throw line, Cooper Pritchett will head to the stripe, and he'll fire the free throw just off the side of the rim, no good. Coop average is 9.7. He had 13 and a nice effort Tuesday of the loss here to the Kingsman. And a substitution, Elijah King, 6'2 freshman, will sub in for Nick Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury's a sophomore, King's a freshman. They got some good players coming up for the, the St. Joe team. Not the Indians, the St. Joe team. Pritchett hits the second of two free throw tries, and it's a not 5-5 tie. Center floor, Kinejny, defended by Rasan, goes center floor to King, dribbles around, kicks it on the wing left. Barza, dribble penetrates, little floating layup, misses, rebound, Anthony Nelson, outlets it to Cooper, one on two, Pritchett, alley-oop to Rasan, over, leads him, and out of bounds to the Indians, or to St. Joe. My apologies. Yeah, so. When, you, when you're doing high school games for 40 years, they will I always know. be the St. Joe hey, Indians. Hey, I, I, no I, disrespect. I am a St. Joe Indian. I know Come you on, are. man. But so I don't know if I like that lob pass there. I mean, I, I, I mean, points are big here. I mean, just get two. Both, just get both two. Both teams kind of ramped up here, each looking for their 16th win of the season. St. Joe 15 and 8, Cave Manor 15 and 7. Kineshny in the free throw circle, defended by Landon John. Step back jumper, rimming high in the air. Brady Fisher literally took it out of Braylon White's hands. Brady will now walk it up the floor against the defender, Garza. Turns, spins, great move. Brady hands it off. Trey Thomas, easy lay-in for two. What a dribble penetration and an assist to Brady Fisher. Trey Thomas off the bench with his first two, and Mr. Walk up 7-5. Great play by Fish. St. Joe doesn't get to the help side as well as the caveman does, and that's got to be a travel, a jump ball. That's got to be something. And three guys swallowed the whistle. Wow. That was great defense by Jack Troyer that should have been a travel on Kineshny. Instead, he gets the, back, the basket, rather, ties this game at seven. Center floor for the Cavemen. They'll set the offense. Jackson Snyder, hash mark right side. Top side to Landon Johns. 
Johns dribbles to the right, looks for a cutter. Nothing there. Back out right wing to Trey. Trey Thomas with the basketball. Center floor now to Landon. 3-10 to go in the first period. Not at 7. Landon Johns on the runner. Had a falling out of bounds on the baseline. Throws it up. No rebound. Barza. Barza up the floor. Feet inside. Shot for White. Pulled up. Partially blocked. Loose ball rebound. Mishawaka. Brady dribbles out of a crowd. Jumps on the basketball. Loose ball picked up. And there's a travel as Brayla White fell on the ball but rolled rolled to probably gain some momentum and some ability to pass the basketball. Eric Gaff not sold on the call. The officials called it a back and over, and I'm not sure he, he had possession to do that. I don't think so either. Now, a travel, yeah. I not, would agree I mean, with Not an travel. over and back. 7-7 seven, seven tie, 2.50 first quarter. Jackson Snyder in the K-Band forecourt. Between the legs with the dribble. Looks to the left side, goes left side to Brady. Picked up there by Brashawn Woods, who subbed in on the last dead ball. Dribble drive, Trey Thomas, hard to the glass, up and good. Great job of getting the defender on his hip. And Trey off the bench with a Sparks and four. Not a lot of help side for St. Joe, so any of those rip drives by Trey Thomas, Cooper Pritchett, or Brady Fisher, they'll get an opportunity to score those. Jace Lee, deep left side, or right side rather, with the basketball. Steps back, he'll launch a three, he'll rattle it off the iron note. Rebound to Shawaka. Landon Johns comes out of a pile with it. Racing to the forecourt. Double team, got stepped into the middle of a double team and on the dribble. And the youngster made that same mistake Tuesday in a critical situation against Penn. And here, Landon dribbles into a little trap and St. Joe will take advantage, tie him up into a jump ball. We always say you got to learn from your mistakes, but you're exactly right. Uh, an almost identical place on the court against Penn. Inbounds, Brady Fisher, long bounce pass right wing, gives to Trey, turns, spins, leans into the basket, cuts it back outside, tries to hand it away to Brady, stolen by St. Joe. Lob up the floor, King, left side, gives it underneath to Woods. Double team, jump pass out to Konezhny, defended by Troyer. Konezhny, step back three, forces it and connects. He kind of shredded off Jack Troyer, and Konezhny with a long NBA range three makes it 10-9 St. Joe. Big time up and rise and knock that deep, deep three in. And, and now, now a foul. St. Joe defensively with a reach-in foul on number 34, Elijah King. Elijah King, a 6'2 freshman, uh, playing in this intensity, energy, high energy type of high school varsity basketball game. He's played in 22 ball games this year, averaging just under eight points and two and a half rebounds. He knows what he's doing out there. Jackson Snyder works at right side, picked up by Shrewsbury, who's back in the St. Joe lineup. Jack Troyer, shake and bake move, now dribbles to the top of the circle. Gives up his dribble, back outside to Jackson Snyder, picked up by Shrewsbury. Now we're at a minute 23, first quarter, 10-9 our score. South Bend St. Joe with the lead. Jackson looks to the left. St. Joe packing it back in now into a 2-3 zone look. Although a little matching up going on now. Fisher in the circle, gives to Trey. Ball on extension right side to Troyer. Troyer fakes, dribbles, takes it on to Kineshny, bounces under the basket, gives it to Brady, lays it up and in. Good post dribble drive by Jack Troyer. He'll get an assist. Brady Fisher with his first points. Quickly up the floor. The St. Joe Indians hustle it back up. And a ball under the basket to Woods. And Woods takes it to the hoop, and he's hammered by Landon Johns. Johns first. That is just the first foul on Mishawaka. St. Joe got the ball out from the score and got up the court in a hurry. And uh, Woods took a hard shot there, but gets two free throws for his efforts. The left-hander fires the first one softly up and in. First free throw attempt for St. Joe tonight. For Sean Woods, a 6'1 junior, he averages 7.9 points and three rebounds a game. A 70% free throw shooter on the season. He'll miss this one off the iron wide right and is rebounded by Brady Fisher. Here comes backcourt. Full court pressure now by St. Joe. Right at the midcourt trap, Jackson Snyder will force his way around the defender. And the ball knocked out of bounds by SJHS. That's a very, I mean, that's a very difficult place to pick the ball up there because the sideline acts like another defender. Backcourt lob in the inbound. Brady Fisher with the honors to Jackson Snyder. Fisher sets up the half court offense. Mishawaka and St. Joe nodded 11-11. And each of these clubs looking for win number 16 on the season. Wonder if we're going to have a thriller like the JV game was because that game went overtime. It's all St. Joe win on a buzzer beater by James Eater, a six-foot sophomore, basically beat the clock to win 55-52. A 
Now, Eric Gaff is not happy with the officials not starting the 10 second count. Up the floor, Jackson Snyder on the attack, into the free throw circle. Ball bobbled, retained. Turn around, jumper's gone! Trey Thomas hits the jumper, there's the horn. It wasn't pretty, but the effect is perfect. And a buzzer beater by Mishawaka gives the Cavemen the lead. Trey Thomas with a six point as we go to the quarter break. After one from the Cave, Mishawaka 13, St. Joe 11. You're in tune with Caveman Basketball. 96 won the ton and the Mishawaka Network. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Open daily. We turn the page to quarter number two, along with former K Bank coach Ron Eklinski. I'm Brian Miller. Wow, what a exciting first eight minutes. 13 11 K Bank. St. Joe not afraid to put up threes. They're two for six. The cavemen are 0 for 1, but the cavemen can get to the basket whenever they want because St. Joe's help side defense isn't as strong. All to the possession of St. Joe. They work it on the baseline and a running reverse layup attempt missed by Jace Lee. Rebound cavemen. They'll look to add to their two point advantage here in their opening possession of period two. Trey Thomas, lob underneath. Cooper catches, leans back, fires it up around the defender, up and in. Really nice post lob. But Pritchett, after a little breather there late first quarter, has his fifth point. Trey Thomas playing really well right now for the Cave. An offensive foul by Elijah King, the freshman, as he took the ball hard to the middle and pushed off with his off arm. So that is that, his second. And that is the third turnover for the, the St. Joe High School team. Inbounds to Mitchell Walker, Jack Troyer, Landon John. Jackson Snyder, Cooper Pritchett, Trey Thomas on the floor. Shot the timeline. Now Jackson Snyder dribbles across, and just as he does so, Elijah King picks his pocket, runs it down, and popcorn dunks it. Two-handed slam, Elijah King, 15-13. On the steal and the Mishawaka turnover, St. Joe pulls within a pair. High lob left corner, Trey Thomas gets it from outside. Dribbles to the wing, goes left point now to Jackson. Dribbles to the top of the circle now. Interesting defensive rotation by St. Joe. Moments it looks like a zone, then all of a sudden they're matching it all up straight up man to man. Jack Troyer, left corner, Landon Johns, long range, missed three, chased down on the knee. Landon Johns collects it, turns, pivots twice outside to Pritchett. Cooper resets the offense center floor. Jackson, right side now to Troyer. Top of the circle again to Jackson. Snyder, the point guard, looks to dribble inside, nothing there. Little switch on the St. Joe defense, but Snyder continues his dribble at the top of the circle. 6.15 and a half out to Landon Johns. He'll throw up a long range three and connect. There's three points, and there's $10 to the boys at Girls Club of St. Joe County. Thank you to Centier Bank. That's a 2 3 matchup zone by St. Joe, and Landon Johns was deep. Nobody could get to him. Shrewsbury Great Terry dribbles around, runs in the lane, fires up the jumper. No, Cooper Pritchett. Rips the rebound away from underneath and a reach in foul defensively. Oh no, they're going to say Pritchett stepped out of bounds with it. That's a tough call. That is a tough call. Trey Thomas subs out. Brady Fisher returns to the caveman combo. Inbounds, top side lob goes center floor now. Jace Lee and now a reach in foul defensively before the dribble drive by Chase Konezny. Landon Johns on the bump. Konezny's such a tough cover because he can take it, he can take it off the deck and get to the rim, or he can stop on a diamond rise from three. 
That's Landon John's second foul here. First on the Cayman in period number two. 5.48 to play before halftime. 18-13 Mishawaka. St. Joe basketball with Barza. Hashmark right side to Kinejni. Defended by Jack Troyer. Kinejni looks for help on the right side. Now dribbles through a screen. Top of the circle. Jump pass off left side. Woods down under the basket. Shot put up. Blocked. Rebounded by Troyer. Troyer knocked it off the feet of Kinejni. And knocked it out of bounds. Great hustle play. Jack Troyer for Mishawaka. Jack Jack Troyer is a really strong kid, really good athlete, and he's a great defensive player. Hung in the air, knocked it off Knezny. Indians get the ball, or uh, the cavemen get the ball. Fisher now to Johns. Johns now Brady dribbles across. Goes right wing now to Jackson Snyder. Snyder double team, triple team. Reverse skip pass out Jack Troyer. Three ball launched by number 11. Missed. Rebound Pritchett. Ball knocked away. Cooper leads back in. Forces up a jumper. Runner missed. Rebound Barza. Barza in transition. Kinezhny, little Euro step around the defender. Running layup is in his 10th point. Chase Kinezhny really a smooth high school basketball player and only a junior. 18-15, Mishawaka by three. We're under five minutes to go in the first half. Now Landon Johns, shy of the timeline, dribbles across now into the forecourt, goes to Brady Fisher. Fisher foul on extension left side. Cooper, left corner to Jackson. Snyder back out center floor, dribbles to the top, now pulls up the brakes at the right point. Post feed under to Pritchett, has to chase it down. Now left of the lane. Cooper forces it down on the baseline. Bounce pass intercepted, stolen by St. Joe. Little runner in the paint put up no good. Jace Lee, when he gets any loose ball, he has one idea, dunk. He's getting to the rack, and he's so athletically gifted. You said it earlier, he's a big-time uh, baseball player. I, I, I can't remember where he's going, but he signed a D1 scholarship somewhere. Notre Dame. Oh, man. Although a lot of folks thinking that uh, he might uh, think about more about the pros. He's got a lot of interest from the major leagues. In the paint, turning, fading, firing, and scoring. Great move. Chase Kinejny with his 12th point. And after the bucket, a timeout taken by Eric Gaff and South Bend St. Joe. We'll take a break. 422 in the half. 18-17. Cavemen, we're back after this. 96 won the ton and the Mishawaka Network. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Emma and Jake's just baby-proof their two-bedroom bungalow to prepare for baby number one insurance. We're good at Madeline and Chance's just gave in and became minivan people to make room for baby number two insurance. And we're good at Gabby and Nate's just moved to a house with a bigger backyard to welcome fur baby number three insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Community, collaboration, teamwork. This is what local means to TLCU Financial. In our community, everyone plays a part, and we're here to play ours. As a credit union, it's what we do. Welcome to TLCU Financial and bank like a local. Hi, I'm Vicki. To become a member, visit us at tlcufinancial.org or stop in at our Mishawaka branch across from John Young Middle School. Your credit union, your way. I'm Brian Miller. We're back here to the cave. We want to send our thoughts out to Brady Gallo of the Mishawaka Network, normally with our sideline reports each uh, home game, but under the weather tonight, so he is home. But looking forward to having him back with us for sectional tournament coverage next week right here on 96 won the Ton and the Mishawaka Network that will be airing and telecasting all of those tournament games. Means we got to do the whole game ourselves? Well, maybe not quite that. Much, oh, you know. man. I, I know you're never shy for words, so. Oh, I, I like Brady, and, man. And, I, and I know you've got your hat on backwards. You're ready for baseball season, so you're ready to go. The Cubs played today. Come on. I know they did, and they uh, beat the uh, Southsiders. Yes, sir. So after the timeout, St. Joe, Mishawaka will go to work a 1 2 2 zone employed by St. Joe as Mishawaka sets the offense. Right side, Jackson Snyder to Jack Troyer now playing the point. Brady Fisher, Landon Johns, Cooper Pritchett round out this five combination out there for Brady, or rather for Bodie Bender. And the Mishawaka Cavemen who lead by one with 3.40 to play in the first half. Landon Johns, center floor. Cavemen very, very patient here trying to dissect this defense. Out to Johns. He'll throw up a three. Connects! Landon Johns with his second triple of the ball game. And another $10 to the Boys and Girls Club of St. Joe County. Thanks to Centier Bank. Baseline dribble drive. Shot put up. Blocked from behind. Woods a shot blocked by Fisher. Rebounded. Kinejny fakes, turns, spins, and hits him. But wait, a travel. Wipe out the basket. Possession to the caveman. I say when in doubt, shoot it. And uh, Landon Johns was 25 feet out. 
and put it up and hit his second three of the night. Yeah, a couple of updates for you on the U.S. Sidecrafter scoreboard. At halftime, Westview leaves Concord 12, or try again, 20 to 12. Second quarter, East Noble beating up on Wawa C, 17-8. That's going to make you really angry after last Saturday's happenings. And Laporte leading Clay, second quarter. The Slicers 23, the Colonials 15. Inbounds, Cavemen up the floor. Rasan Johnson with it, who just checked in during the last dead ball. Now to Brady. Brady across the way, right side, now to Troyer. Deep corner, right side. Anthony Nelson, double team, triple team. Bounces down center floor to Troyer in the circle. Pritchett, double team, out to Jack in the left corner. Rasan bobbled it and then traveled with it. Turnover, Cavemen. That's a sixth turnover by the Cavemen. And uh, you just got to get that ball on the deck, Rasan, before you, you take off. Right idea, the St. Joe defender was running out at him and not closing out at him. Just got to get it on the deck. Coach Bodie Bender having some intense words with Jack Troyer as he comes off the floor. More of a teaching and coaching moment. Top side three, launch, missed badly by Konezhny. Rebound to Brady Fisher. Waits for traffic to clear, gives to Coop, gets it right back, and now Fisher walks it through the center stripe. 2.40 to play in the half, 21-17. Miss Showalka looking to snap a two-game losing skip. Anthony Nelson way out right side, goes left point. Cooper dribbles, forces the bounce pass to the floor. It ricochets out to Johns, out to Nelson. Nelson dribbles inside the arc, jump pass to the corner. Brady sets, fires three, connects! Brady Fisher with a triple of his own. He's got five. Mishawaka now with the lead, 24-17 in the paint. Little runner and the floater put up Elijah King, the freshman, with his second field goal, his fourth point. 24-19. Two minutes to go in the half. A little 1 2 2 full court pressure now for St. Joe. Rasan gets the pass from Landon Johns, races to the forecourt, right block on the baseline. Brady bobbles it, turns, forces up the jumper, tapped up no. Rebound Brady, turns, spins, goes up for the shot, and a foul on the floor by St. Joe. Yeah, I mean, I mean, great intense effort by Brady Fisher. Got the first shot, didn't go, battled hard, got the rebound, got fouled hard. But unfortunately, the foul was on the floor. Foul on St. Joe's Jerry Barza, the 5'11 seniors first foul, team second of the half, and or rather of the quarter. I mixed up my college terminology with my pro or the high school terminology yeah. with the new rule this year with fouls resetting each quarter in a high school game. Center floor inbounds, Anthony Nelson gets it, hands to Rasan. Came men up with 100 seconds to go in the half by five. Top side, Rasan kicks it right wing to Brady. Eyes the floor, looks to the basket, now dribbles outside right wing. Goes to Nelson, top side three, connects! Anthony Nelson from way outside the arc. Top side trade, 27-19, Mishawaka. Another $10 from Centier Bank to the boys and girls club of St. Joe County. That's the fourth three-point shot in this second quarter, big time for the caveman. Barza, right side hands to King, top side Kadeshdi, left of the lane, goes right side to Woods now. Woods far baseline corner, dribble drive, Lee runs into the sophomore, Landon Johns, and called for the offensive player control foul. Jace Lee shaking his head. I don't know why he's shaking his head for. He put the arm out, he pushed the sophomore. Landon Johns getting a lot of run in this game so far, and deservedly so, doing a nice job on defense and making a couple threes. Up the floor now, Brady Fisher draws some double team attention, picks up his dribble, now fires it right in the lane. Pritchett gives it on the back door, cut! Brady lay it up in the air. It could have been a panic mode, but instead, good poise, Cavemen connect, and they lead by 10, 29, 19. Great give and go play between the two seniors, Fisher and Pritchett. Woods, right in the lane, jump pass to the top, three ball launched by King, he'll connect. The freshman keeping his team in this game with seven. Seven second quarter points, 29-22. The lead is seven with a half minute to play first half. And Landon Johns falls down. Thought he could have got away, or he got away maybe with kind of pushing that elbow out. But there was a lot of contact right at midcourt across the way in front of the Mishawaka pep band. Caleb Chamberlain and his crew of kids doing a great job here tonight. We've got a good atmosphere. Mishawaka doing a great job against... The 1-2-2 two, two full court pressure by St. Joe. Not uh, panicking, just keeping the ball in the, in, in the right places on the court, which is the middle of the floor. Now it looks like we have a timeout. 
Yes, taken by Mishawaka. 30 second break, 24 Some seconds. Some see a student half. athlete 24 working on a shot. 49, 22, Mishawaka back we in 30 seconds. 96 was a ton in the Mishawaka network. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. We'll have the ball for the last 24.5 seconds and undoubtedly will uh, will play for the last shot. And certainly the, in this whole week, they've had three buzzer beaters, twice against Penn first and second quarter, and a first quarter shot here tonight. Inbounds backcourt to Rasan. Races it across the timeline to Barza. Now center floor. Anthony Nelson has the ball stripped away. Jace Lee on the steal. And then Nelson wisely probably steps in and knocks the ball from behind but commits a foul. And that's probably a really good foul by the K-Band senior. It's actually a great foul because Jace Lee was full steam ahead <laughs> uh, going to the rack and, and, and either would have had the basket or got fouled at the rim. Now St. Joe has to take it out underneath their basket. Now the officials are going to do a little janitorial work here with 13 seconds in our first half. A couple of updates for you on the U.S. Sign Crafter School Board. Halftime, Mishawaka Marion led South Bend Adams 25-14. And now a second period score, DeKalb leading Northridge 16-15. Everybody tuning up for tournament time as Hoosier Hysteria begins next Tuesday throughout the state inbounds Lee and the inbounds is kicked by Cooper Pritchett so the reset on the inbounds St. Joe will have it they'll trigger it baseline right under their basket high lob top side of Jace Lee to Konezhny works around two defenders little runner eight footer that's automatic for Chase Konezhny he's got 16 29 28 and now a dribble along the sideline and Rasan Johnson Makes a little contact with the defender, but not enough for a foul. Steps out of bounds with it. So a 2.7 and a 5-point Mishawaka lead. St. Joe gets the ball back. Inbounds, St. Joe. Topside Konezhny dribbles, throws up the runner, misses the jumper, and we go to halftime. K-Men get a break on that possession. Chase Konezhny doesn't oh, miss K-Men many from that range. Well, that's the best look he had all night tonight. It was wide open and just missed it. Our office offers Invisalign embraces for both children and adults. Call us for your complimentary consultation today. We take our business seriously, but our ultimate goal is to put a smile on your face. For more information, visit our website at www.wernackfamilyortho.com. Hi, I'm Nate Zolman. In 1963, my father, Bud Zolman, began working in the tire and automotive service industry. After many years of hard work and dedication, he and my mother, Diane, founded Zolman's Tire in 1978, 45 years ago. Today, we have eight retail locations and three commercial truck tire and diesel locations. After all these years, Zolman's is still going strong, serving you and your family for three generations. Buy local, shop local. Zolman's Best One Tire and Auto Care. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Matt's one-car, two-bedroom apartment with a home office slash home gym so insurance. You, yeah. We're good at Nick's SUV and farmhouse with a remodeled kitchen slash art gallery insurance. And we're good at the Wilbur suburban home with a two-car garage slash rehearsal space insurance. Have you seen my hockey socks? Have you checked your sock drawer? Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Welcome right back to the cave. I'm Daniel Phillips, and here with Will Mason. Will, we've got quite the game on our hands right now. The cavemen are leading by five. 
St. Joe High School right now. They're playing pretty well, but on the defensive end, they're lacking a lot. Yeah, they're but... Letting, they're letting Mitchell like, Wall get some open shots, you know? I feel like they're... Uh, they're making up for it on the offense, though. Yeah, no doubt about it. They've got some amazing athletes. We've seen a few. A few are uh, gotten some got some interest from uh, some uh, colleges on the base at the, in the baseball department. Um, we got we got Jace of, of St. Joe. He's got some interest from Notre Dame. He got some interest from the pros as well. But anyway, some athleticism shown displayed by St. Joe right now, and uh, some Mishawaka athleticism we're seeing as well. Mishawaka is shooting very well, shooting the ball great right now. A lot of threes that we've seen. I don't have the the, the exact number, but a lot of three pointer shot and a lot of them made. Two of them I know by Landon Johns, the sophomore standout. One of them by Brady Fisher. He yep. had a big one. And then Anthony, I know he hit one from deep up he did. top of the key. Right in front of us. Big one. That was a big momentum switcher, I feel like, for the team. That helped them get into the half, I feel like. Five point lead, and it's big. With that deep three, it just big momentum switcher. No doubt about it, Will. No doubt about it. Now, we were talking earlier pregame. If you guys watched the pregame show, uh, a win going into sectionals could be huge. It could basically make or break your confidence going into that game. Now, Mishawaka, as we said, has the port coming up on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. here in the cave. We'll also be broadcasting that game. Brian Miller, Ron Klinsky, and our own Brady Gallo will be running sideline. Uh, Klinsky and Miller doing play-by-play -play in color. So, winning this game is crucial. They're on the right track right now, but five points is not a lot. We both know that in basketball it can change. Yep. Mishawaka was up by, I believe, four points. Score was 24-20 to 20 against Penn on Tuesday night, and they ended up losing by five, you know. So, what do you think? that Mishawaka needs to do to maintain this lead right now? Uh, I think you need to score points. You win games by scoring points, so I think you need to do that. That's your biggest part. And then defense, we're a defensive team, so we get them both done. That's going to secure you a big game going into the sectionals, big morale boost for the whole team. It's I think it's just big all around. Yeah, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. We were talking about earlier, speaking of big, St. Joe's got a fairly tall team. A lot of length on their, a lot of length on their side of the court. Uh, Mitchell Walker kind of, I don't want to say lacks in length, but they don't have any standout tall big I mean, guys. I think we match them with their tallest guy with ours, with Brady Fisher, and he's been doing really well in the post game. He's had some great finishes, him and Cooper Pritchett playing some mean basketball, but I like it. They're getting physical down low, and they're making their shots when they need to. Yeah, one I want to say about big men, you were talking about how we kind of match up well against them. We've matched up great against their big guys it's, it's it's like they don't they're not even there kind of it's like they're the same size as our guys because we're getting in there now we're hitting those outside shots but we're getting in the paint and getting those finishing opportunities as well doing a fantastic job Mishawaka in a great position right now they got control over St. Joe they're doing a fantastic job and uh I think that if they continue this they'll be good they'll be very very good now what does St. Joe need to do in order to maybe get themselves back into the game? They're still in it. What do they need to do to maybe tie it up or take that lead? Uh, I feel like they need to start passing the ball around. That's what Mishawaka is great about. Their type of basketball, it's whoever the next man is. Like you swing it out to your teammate, and, but St. Joe is just a lot of one-person basketball I feel like going on right now. If you just make that a team game, then it's going to be a different story, and I think it's going to be a closer game, to be honest. Yeah, well, I completely agree. I know that you were talking about how it's kind of been like a one-man show every single St. Joe possession, or often on those St. Joe possessions, you need – there's five guys on the court for a reason. I'm sure that the assist numbers for St. Joe aren't very high. They may need to change that. I think you're completely right. And if they do make that change, maybe they have more of a chance of snatching that lead or at least tying it up. Yeah. Now – we said in about five minutes talking about this. I think that's enough. Give your guys, the, the, our viewers, ears a rest. Uh, you know, maybe get a little break for ourselves, a little water break. But we will be back with the continuation of this matchup between St. Joe High School and the Mitchell Cavemen. Score 29-24, Cavemen leading by five. We'll be back with the second half. Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nidig. 
Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event. Some see a student-athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Emma and Jake's just baby-proof their two-bedroom bungalow to prepare for baby number one insurance. We're good at Madeline and Chance's just gave in and became minivan people to make room for baby number two insurance. And we're good at Gabby and Nate's just moved to a house with a bigger backyard to welcome fur baby number three insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Community, collaboration, teamwork. This is what local means to TLCU Financial. In our community, everyone plays a part, and we're here to play ours. As a credit union, it's what we do. Welcome to TLCU Financial and bank like a local. Hi, I'm Vicki. To become a member, visit us at tlcufinancial.org or stop in at our Mishawaka branch across from John Young Middle School. Your credit union, your way. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Hello, cavemen. It's Dr. Joe Winnack with Winnack Family Orthodontics. I'm excited to be a part of the caveman athletic season. Our office offers Invisalign and braces for both children and adults. Call us for your complimentary consultation today. We take our business seriously, but our ultimate goal is to put a smile on your face. For more information, visit our website at www.winnackfamilyortho.com. Hi, I'm Nate Zolman. In 1963, my father, Bud Zolman, began working in the tire and automotive service industry. After many years of hard work and dedication, he and my mother, Diane, founded Zolman's Tire in 1978, 45 years ago. Today, we have eight retail locations and three commercial truck tire and diesel locations. After all these years, Zolman's is still going strong, serving you and your family for three generations. Buy local, shop local. Zolman's Best One Tire and Auto Care. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Matt's one car, two bedroom apartment with a home office slash home gym insurance. You, yeah. We're good at Nick's SUV and farmhouse with a remodeled kitchen slash art gallery insurance. And we're good at the Wilbur suburban home with the two car garage slash rehearsal space insurance. Have you seen my hockey socks? Have you checked your sock drawer? Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Six for Trey Thomas, six for Landon Johns. Brady Fisher leading the way with seven. All to the possession arrow to Mishawaka as we turn the page to quarter number three. Our third quarter brought to you by Ron's Grape Road Automotive, the Alley-Oop Postlov. Down to the far left side of Brady, jump pass into the lane, drive, looking for a cutter to Cooper Pritchard, but that pass is deflected out of bounds by Jace Lee. Mishawaka will retain possession and inbounded again just underway here in period three. Brady Fisher had a nice seal. Rashawn Johnson just waited too long to make that feed. And now Rasan tries to lean into the pain and kind of force it up against the defender, Chase Kadejdi. And Kadejdi will have nothing with it as he swats Rasan's shot out of bounds. Johnson, who averages 10 per game, has been held scoreless here in this first half by more or less really the pace of this game. 29-24, Rasan ball fakes to the corner, has it out, hash mark right side. Dribbles once, goes right wing to Anthony Nelson, reverse skip pass. Cooper Pritchett fakes to the baseline, goes up with a shot, and as he's hacked and fouled, he'll throw up a prayer that does not fall. But I would assume a two-shot foul here for Cooper Pritchett. Yes, free throws upcoming as Jace Lee picks up his second foul of the night. 
team's first of the quarter. Just underway here in period number three with St. Joe, 15 and eight overall. Eight and three, they finished fourth in the Northern Indiana Conference race. And Mishawaka, 15 and seven overall, trying to snap a two game losing skid. But a club that is eight and one here at home and they finished tied for first with Concord and Northridge as Northern Lakes Conference champions. After a free throw miss, the second one reboots and scores for Cooper Pritchett, 30 to 24 Mishawaka. Barza to Sh Shrewsbury, deep right side. Now Lee fakes it, drives the lane. Now dishes outside. Kadejdi will connect on a three. Nick Kadejdi, a sophomore who averages nearly eight, has his first points. And Shrewsbury it's knocked that down. Did I say someone else? You said Kadejdi. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Shrewsbury. Top side, ball bobbled. Stolen from Pritchett by Kadejdi, and the ball stripped away, stolen by Brady. Up the floor to Jackson Snyder. Thought about dribbling and attacking, but then wisely held it up and resets the Mishawaka offense. They lead it by three, 30 to 27. Center floor, Rasan. Rasan with the basketball. Goes center floor to Jackson Snyder, 6.40, third quarter remaining. Brady on the wing right side, looks for a screen, waits for the handoff, now flips it behind him, two-handed pass to Rasan. Top side, Johnson, fakes, dribbles, drives, tries to get the lean in, nothing there. Well defended by St. Joe and Jace Lee, and they'll reset in center floor now. Jackson Snyder in the corner, baseline right. Cooper takes it to the glass, has a double team. Ball ripped away, Barza on the steal. Barza up the floor, puts on the brakes, step back, fires a three, connects. Everybody peeled off of Barza. So he just put it up and in, lob up the floor. Brady Fisher to Cooper Pritchett, waits for traffic to clear, and Coop's got his eighth point. 32-29, Mishawaka back the other way. Jace Lee running, jumping, shooting, missing. Left wing miss from 12. Rebound Rasan. He'll take it to the teeth of the defense, and in the lane, the ball stripped away by Chase Kadejny, and Eric Gaff is absolutely beside himself. The pace of this third quarter has really picked up. As the first couple minutes, both teams are really getting up and down the floor. Rashawn Johnson uh, got bailed out there because he really had nothing. But now he's going to get to the line and have a chance to score a couple free throws. Jack Troyer will sub in on the next dead ball. Their second year caveman mentor, Bodie Bender. And this free throw by Rasan is off the mark, wide left. Substitution, Jack Troyer, as we mentioned, subs in. He'll check in for Anthony Nelson. John Johnson, uh, a nice job of getting to the basket, but can't convert either free throw, but Cooper Pritchett does. As the Whoa. rebound, the rebound was knocked out of Brady Fisher's hand, and Cooper Pritchett with a garbage basket puts in his 10th point. Barza back the other way, cuts it down the middle of the lane, and takes it to the hole and gets hacked and fouled by a K-man defender. It'll be foul, Jackson Snyder, his first, team's first of the period, and a couple of free throws upcoming here for 5'11 senior Jerry Barza looking for, well, actually just the second trip to the free throw line tonight for St. Joe all night. And this free throw, a nice soft touch up and in. Substitution for St. Joe. For Sean Woods, Elijah King, they'll sub in. Woods had one first half point on a free throw, and Elijah King was impressive with seven second quarter points off the bench. Elijah King, the freshman, really athletic, got up and put one down hard. The second free throw, however, missed by Barza, rebound Rasan Johnson. He'll run to the forecourt, puts it on the puts it on the floor, now right hash mark in front of the Mishawaka bench. 5.24 to play in the period. Mishawaka 34-30. Deep right corner, Jackson Snyder falling down, tries to cut to the basket, loose ball knocked around, and the officials are an absolute question mark. All yeah. three officials, I think the third one had to guess where the ball was going because yeah, I, the ball was ricocheted off about three sets of hands. I, I, didn't, I thought it would be Mr. Walker's ball. Well, guess what? It's not. And the three blind mice couldn't make that call. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. I think yeah, the officials I are great. I, I love them. I know. Trey Thomas subs in for Jackson Snyder. Top side, Kinejdi, defended by Rasan. Center floor now, Ryder Place subs in for his first look tonight for St. Joe. Elijah King, center floor to Kinejdi. Long range three, rimming, no. Brady Fisher cleans the glass for the rebound and flips it up the floor to Jackson or try again to Jack Troyer. 
Sometimes you got to live with those threes when you got a really good shooter because I didn't think it was a particularly good shot. Hassan tries to dribble in a little traffic and then waits for things to clear and puts a little 10 footer up and in. Hassan's first points. And it's now 36 30. So my question's been answered. I, I think Mitch Walk has played really well here in the and first King three minutes. Throws up a little prayer as he had a defender all over him. That's his ninth point. 36 32, prayer answer. Backcourt pressure now by St. Joe. Rasan Johnson will race it up the floor and beat the 10 second violation by a couple. Works it left side in front of the student body. In the paint, turn, spins, shot, put up, touch, block, rebound. Fisher up and in. What an athletic ball by Brady Fisher after Rasan had his shot blocked. And it's a six point K man lead back the other way. Little runner, three ball put up, missed by King. Loose ball rebound. Shrewsbury back outside of the paint. Little dribble drive. Runner by Woods put up no. Muscled into the defense by Cooper Pritchett and a Pritchett foul from Mishawaka. Mishawaka could not come up with that defensive rebound. St. Joe got a couple attempts of it. And uh, number 32, Brayshawn Woods, the left-handed junior, is going to get a couple free throws for staying with it. Woods 45 of 64 on the season coming into tonight's action. And he nets the first free throw. That is his second point, both from the stripe. 38-32, Mishawaka lead is now at five. Substitution, it'll be Jace Lee returning to the Indian lineup for Chase Kanejdi. Backcourt inbounds, run of the end line, Brady Fisher triggers it to Rasan. Oh, Rasan almost traveled with it. Backcourt Brady races it up the floor, getting close to the 10 second count, fires it across to Jack Troyer, and then the ball knocked away. Loose ball saved by Troyer. Caveman got a break right there as the ball was deflected by St. Joe defensively. 333, third quarter. Mishawaka by five, 38, 33. Trey Thomas takes it left, dribbles right, goes down the middle of the lane, puts up the run handed hook shot. No, rebound, St. Joe. Woods races up the floor, jump pass to the corner. Back outside, Shrewsbury, top side to Place, and he'll nail the three. Ryder Place nails a three, and Bodie Bender will burn a Mishawaka timeout. 3-11, third quarter. Ryder Place didn't play in the first half. He, uh, came in near the 5-9 uh, Southmore. Again, another young player for St. Joe. Comes in and makes a big three. Off of a bad shot by Trey Thomas for the game. Mishawaka lead just to 38-36. We're back at 30 seconds. 96 won the ton in the Mishawaka Network. Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nydig. Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. After the Mishawaka timeout, St. Joe changes up the defense, puts some pressure on, but Mishawaka breaks the press. Not necessarily a pretty version of press breaking. But they work it down inside, and Trey Thomas cuts to the basket, gets home his eighth point, and the lead for Mishawaka back to four. That's just a great pass by Jack Troyer to find Trey. And Trey Thomas also almost deflects it from Kinejdi and gets a steal, but Kinejdi saved the, the possession. Elijah King dribbles the paint. Little double pump jumper right into the grill of him as defender Cooper Pritchett. And now King... Pulls this game within two, but the little runner put up no good. Missed by Trey Thomas. Rebounded by Pritchett. No good. Rebounded by St. Joe, and they throw it away. Wow, the K-Men had a couple of great looks. Could not finish. Yeah, so back in the old days, you call those little bunnies right there. They had it. 
but uh, they're fortunate then that St. Joe threw the ball away and couldn't capitalize on those two misses by Mishawaka. Backcourt pressure by St. Joe. Brady Fisher will dribble it across, take it into the teeth of the defense, gets hip checked from the backside, crashes to the floor, and a foul on St. Joe. Foul will be on number 24, Jace Lee. I have him for three, and the scoreboard calls him for three. His third and the third of the quarter on the St. Joe High School boys team. For Brady taking that hard fall, he's, he's not even getting rewarded for free throws. Inbounds Jack Troyer, top of the circle, left side to Brady. Behind the back with the dribble, shovels it behind him, now to Trey. Top side now to Rasan. Johnson on the dribble, takes the handoff, dribbles baseline, leans in, forces it up and in. Nice, aggressive drive to the basket by Rasan Johnson. He's got four, 42, 38 cavemen. Great elevation. Once he got to the angle that he could put it off the glass, he elevated. Minute 45 of the quarter, Konezhny draws a triple team, leans into the paint, runner put up, no good. Nobody under the basket for the rebound for St. Joe. So Mishawaka basketball as Brady Fisher now will patiently walk it from left to right from the Mishawaka backcourt to the forecourt as they're shooting at the north basket here at the cave going left to right as we describe it now. Konezhny gets his hands in, steals it from Brady. Fisher steals it back, gives to Thomas, laying up at him. A little garbage time for the Cavemen, but they'll take it. They lead 44-38. John Wooden said never dribble it up, pick the ball up, and Konezny tried to dribble it up. In the paint, dribble drive put up by Brashawn Woods and a foul inside on the Cavemen, and I believe on Jack Troyer. That's, that's one of Johnny Wooden's maxims. He, I, mean, I mean, he was big on that. Don't dribble the ball up. Go down and physically pick it up. And Chase tried to dribble it up. The caveman came away with an easy basket. So for Sean Woods, who is one of two and one of two in a couple of trips tonight. So he will fire this one up for his third point. Second free throw. This the second one is missed no good. Rebound, tap, 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 loose ball. Chased down by Trey Thomas. Scoops it away. Troyer up the floor. Johnson, one minute, third quarter. Rasan strong to the basket, put it up no. But he'll get rewarded with a couple of free throws as he's hacked and fouled by the St. Joe freshman, Elijah King. When Rasan Johnson, Johnson rip drives and gets to the basket, he's really good, but he's got to be decisive with it. That time he was really decisive. Help side couldn't get there. Gets a couple of free throws for his effort. Free throw by Rasan up, and he tickles the twines for his free, first free throw of the night. And his fifth point, he averages 10. 58.9 ticks, third quarter with Ron Heklinski. I'm Brian Miller. Glad to have you with us here on the radio and on the Mishawaka Network tonight. Second Johnson free throw is good. 46-37, lead back to seven. 46-39, Cavemen. Elijah King with the basketball. Loosely defended, man-to-man -man style by Brady Fisher. Little shake, little bait. King delivers left side. Dribble drive, strong to the glass. Woods has the ball ripped away, stolen by Rassam. Rasan races up the floor, 37 seconds. Behind the back with the dribble, in the paint. Feeds to Cooper, takes it up strong to the glass. A lot of contact, no blood, no foul. Loose ball, Karam's out of bounds. Touch last by St. Joe. I thought, I thought Coop got hacked a little bit, but I thought once he executed the, the shot fake that he would be able to go up and get that on the glass. Didn't wait long enough. Yeah. Traffic had not quite cleared the runway. Cody Bender not happy with that offensive possession. Up the floor now, Elijah King holds the basketball midcourt. Dribbling with the left hand, loosely defended by Brady Fisher. Now a screen step. Dribbling, right side. King falls down, throws up a prayer. Loose ball rebound. Pritchett to Trey Thomas at three. And a dunk by Rasan Johnson as time will expire in the quarter. What a scramble for the loose ball. Trey Thomas with a magnificent look up the floor and Rasan with an exclamation point ducks it home and we go to the quarter break. After three, Cavemen 48, South and St. Joe 39. You're two with Mishawaka Boys Basketball. 96 won the ton and tonight on the Mishawaka Network. We're good at Emma and Jake's just baby proof their two bedroom bungalow to prepare for baby number one insurance. We're good at Madeline and Chance's just gave in and became minivan people to make room for baby number two insurance.
And we're good at Gabby and Nate's just moved to a house with a bigger backyard to welcome fur baby number three insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Emma and Jake's just baby-proof their two-bedroom bungalow to prepare for baby number one insurance. We're good at Madeline and Chance's just gave in and became minivan people to make room for baby number two insurance. And we're good at Gabby and Nate's just moved to a house with a bigger backyard to welcome fur baby number three insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. We turn the pitch to quarter number four, along with former K-Man coach Ron Heklitsky. I'm Brian Miller. We've got a dandy here, and the K-Man right now playing well, up 48-39. Mishawaka got 13 shots in that quarter to nine uh, for St. Joe, and shot attempts and the ability to make them have uh, allowed this nine-point lead now for the K-Man. Center floor, Kadeshny with the basketball, works it left side for St. Joe. In the paint, Lee fires it outside. Three ball launch and connected by Elijah King. Man, oh man, that kid, just a ninth grader. He has 14. Mr. Walker came out in a 1-3-1 half-court trap that possession and uh, left the freshman open and he drained it. Backcourt pressure handled nicely by Mishawaka with Fisher and Rasan doing the honors. Mishawaka up by six, 48-42. They worked the basketball deep left point area. Now Brady. Runs to the right side. Scoop handoff now to Trey. Thomas turns, leads him, fades back outside, gives to Fisher. Center floor to Rassam. Seven minutes to go, and off the ball, a foul for an illegal screen on Mishawaka on Cooper Pritchett. No, actually, they're going to call him for a hold. Tried to post up and grabbed that. And, and grabbed a, a piece of the arm of the defender and held it down. That's his third foul, which uh, going down the stretch here, you need Coop in this game. So, so we'll have to see how that works out. Barza dribbles, posts up, topside hands to Elijah King. Topside three, connects! Elijah King with back-to-back -back threes to begin this fourth quarter. And just like that, St. Joe's cut it within 48-45. Center floor, Jack Troyer across to Brady Fisher. Races it up the floor from behind the ball, snatched away. Jason Lee on the steal. His outlet stolen back by Jack Troyer. Troyer to Rasan in front of the band. Runs it up the floor to Brady, and Mitchell Watkins will slow it down. Now the feed inside. Pitch it. Turnaround jumper's good. What great court awareness by Brady Fisher. Just when St. Joe relaxed, they go on the attack, and Coop with the basket. He's got a dozen. It's a nice job of stopping the, the, the little mini run by St. Joe. And uh, that's what Pritch does, man. 50-45, Mishawaka, six minutes to play. Bars it, dribbles through the lane. Back right side, Jace Lee dribbles, pull up 12-footer, connects. Jace Lee with his fourth point. He averages 15, 50-47. to Midcourt laser pass to Trey Thomas, dribbles it, feeds it left side. Jack Troyer goes up with a shot. Loose ball, Cooper Pritch will dive on it. And do we have a jump ball? Yes, we do. Mishawaka's ball on the alternate possession. Tell you what, that was a gutsy decision by Cooper Pritchett to dive in that pile, working right now, heck, with three fouls. Yeah, no, that's he's a big part of this game. And if there's, if there's ever any question, he, he's going to sacrifice his body uh, for the good of his team. Inbounds Mishawaka with 5.38 to play. Fisher turns, spins. Little scoop handoff underneath the Trey Thomas lays it up and in. Brady Fisher with yet another assist. Trey Thomas with a dozen, and it's 52-47. Michelle Walker. I like this big lineup that the Cavemen have now with Trey Thomas, Brady Fisher, and Cooper in the game together. Jace Lee with a flat jumper that lands off the rebound right in the hands of Brashawn Woods, who puts it up and in. And then St. Joe will burn a quick 30-second timeout. We will do the same. 30-second break, 5.16 to play. Cavemen by three, 52-49. Back after this, 96 won the top this is what and the Mishawaka Network. This to TLCU Financial. In our community, everyone plays a part, and we're here to play ours. As a credit union, it's what we do. Welcome to TLCU Financial and bank like a local. Hi, I'm Vicki. To become a member, visit us at tlcufinancial.org or stop in at our Mishawaka branch across from John Young Middle School. 
Your credit union, your way. Back here to the cave, an exciting night of high school boys basketball as we tune it up for Hoosier Hysteria that begins next week. Inbounds, Mishawaka after the St. Joe timeout. Lasant Johnson behind the back with the dribble, lost it, retained it. Brady up the floor, finds it to Rasan. Rasan with a great save on a pass behind him. Now Rasan will run to the floor, takes it in the rack, shot put up and blocked, and a foul on St. Joe. And Eric Gaff is beside himself. The foul's on Chase Lee, and uh, Lee got up and got the ball, but his body got a piece of Rasan Johnson also. That is Lee's fourth foul. Decision time for third-year St. Joe coach Eric Gaff. And obviously the player says, leave me in, coach, leave me in, coach. But I think the coach knows better and will probably get him for a minute or so. And Rasan, and just as I say that, Shrewsbury comes in for Chase Lee. Rasan misses that first attempt. He'll have one more at 5-0-1 to play. Mishawaka 52. St. Joe 49. And the second free throw by Rasan is no good. Rebound. Here comes St. Joe up the floor. Barza in the paint. Double team. Kicks out. Shrewsbury. Three. Hits it off the back of the window. Rebounded by Trey Thomas. Hands it to Jack Troyer. Troyer will walk it up the floor with the defense backpedaling. Surprise St. Joe called off the pressure. Center floor Rasan. Little shake and make move. Now he'll go to work against Woods. Three or try again, 4.33 to play. Right corner, Trey Thomas. Jump pass to the top to Jack Troyer down. Troyer with the basketball. Cavemen by three with the lead. Again, 52-49. Jack Troyer bobbles the dribble, flips it back outside to Brady. Defended by Kadezhny. Now Fisher back to the basket, back to the defender. Looks to lead in, nothing there. Outside finds Cooper Pritchett. Fakes, dribbles, takes the hole. Running layup is good. Good, aggressive move. Cooper Pritchett with that first quick step as his 14th, and it's 54-49 Mishawaka. Great decisive big time move by Pritch. Right in the paint, Kadezhny fakes right, goes left, turns hard off the window with a soft touch up and in. Kadezhny was 16. Backcourt inbounds to Jack Troyer, now to Brady Fisher. St. Joe has put the backcourt press back on. Jack Troyer races it to the forecourt, and Bodie Bender will take a caveman timeout. We'll do the same. 3.40 to play, three-point ball game. Mishawaka 54, Southland St. Joe 51. Timeout with a 30-second T.O. We're back in 30 seconds, 96 Some on the top. see a student athlete back after working this. on a shot. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Back here to the cave at Mishawaka High School with Ron Heklinski. I'm Brian Miller. Timeout Bodie Bender. He still has two remaining. St. Joe has three remaining. A little different lineup now for the cavemen here. The last quarter and a half is Jackson Snyder's on the bench. And Trey uh, Thomas is in the game. Great size for the cavemen. Rashawn Johnson handling the ball. Rashawn out hash mark right side. I thought the uh, St. Joe was changing their nickname, and there's a five-second violation on Hassan Johnson. We're not penetrating past the hash mark with the basketball. And now, Bodie Bender will go to Jackson Snyder in 319 to play. Yeah, that, I mean, that was just a, a play by Rashawn. Just get the ball out of your hand. Get the ball moved a little bit and, uh, you know, start to count all over again. But I thought that lineup really played well for the caveman down the stretch here. Kadeshny through a screen, running, jumping, shooting three, missing rebound. Jack Troyer tries to dribble it on the crowd, pays the price, has his pocket pick. King, left side, goes to Shrewsbury. Now sets it back to the freshman, Elijah King. Left-handed dribble at three minutes to play, caveman by three. 54, 51, King 
kicks it, corner, three ball, Barza, Ribby, no, tapped up, no, and a foul on the floor by Mishawaka. And on Jackson Snyder. Jackson trying to get a block out was a little forceful there, but a great attempt at getting the block out. Now St. Joe has another opportunity underneath their basket with Jace Lee now coming back in for Barkley. So Barza will take a chair. Jace Lee again working with four fouls. Held tonight just to four points as he averages 15. Inbounds Indians. And the inbounds almost taken away by Mishawaka, but Jace Lee with it. Outside right point. Goes to Kinejni. Kinejni backs up to the middle court stripe. And at 2.40 to play, will reset the St. Joe offense. Takes it, goes right, turns, spins, fires, a 15-footer, connects. Chase Kinejni. 18 points, 54-53, St. Joe by one. Lob up the floor, Jackson Snyder races to the forecourt. Double team, hands it outside as St. Joe's going to match it up now. Out of that zone, Brady hand off to Jackson Snyder. And 2-10 to play. Now they're doing the uh, Indian War Chant. I thought they were changing their nickname, Heck. I think they need to be doing the Buffalo Grunt or something. Cooper Pritchett hands off down to Brady Fisher. Fisher right side, chased down by two defenders. Behind the back of the dribble, outlet pass, stolen by Lee. He'll go in for the dunk. And St. Joe leads at 55, 54, 144 to play. That was a lot of time to try and take the air out of the ball. And I mean, I want, I want the K-Men to go back and play. Lob pass to the circle. It is Jackson Snyder back out left side of Jack Troyer. K-Men trail by one. They had a seven point lead just moments ago. Snyder right side to Cooper, fakes, turns, spins. Rolls for the lean in. Now he'll go back to work. Ball ripped away. Loose ball chased down by Trey Thomas. 1-11 to play. 55-54 St. Joe. Each club looking for win number 16 on the season. Now dribble drive. Brady bobbles it. Throws a prayer up off the window. No. Tapped up. No. Kineshny with a rebound. And a timeout taken by Eric Gaff and South Bend St. Joe. So Mishawaka with a seven point lead just moments ago has seen that streak away on an eight nothing run by the Indians and a timeout now taken by South and St. Joe. 55-54, we're gonna keep it right here. And remind you fans, dance a real crunch here next to get together. Yeah, the family outing, maybe a picnic in the spring. Get some chips, man. Yeah, Jay's Crunch is for kid and chips. Hey, you got some chips in your bag? Uh, not tonight. Uh, I, if I did, they would have been long gone. So I don't like that timeout by St. Joe at that place on the court because now, now they give Miss Walker an opportunity to full court press them, trap them real quick. I, I like advancing the ball up to the, the uh, half court and inbounding the ball there. I mean, less trapping situations. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Coach, as we watch this team with that lead, and they outscored St. Joe in the third quarter, 19-15 the lead by nine after three. Just moments ago had a seven-point lead. Certainly, St. Joe has ramped up the defense a little bit. What are other things that have caught your eye? Yeah, I, I thought with about two and a half minutes left, if, if the K-men uh, uh, were going to pull it out and make St. Joe come out, they should have brought everybody up. But just Brady up top handling the ball, I thought it was tough for him. Uh, they trapped him, lost it, and then they and then St. Joe got something going. Backcourt inbounds to St. Joe. Kadezhny, double team, tries to float it, pass up the floor. Stolen by Brady Fisher, he'll take it right down the middle of the lane. Put it up, no, and a foul committed by the Indians. I mean, that's exactly what I just said. It's hard, it's hard to get trapped on the baseline and then expect to break that press. And they turned it over, Brady Fisher, uh, uh, very opportunistic, picked it up, got to the rack, and we'll have two free throws here. Brady at the line will fire the first free throw. It is up off the mark, his first try of the night. 
He will have one more, which could tie this game. 55-54, St. Joe with 48 seconds to play. He's about a 60% free throw shooter. He had no arch on that one. This one with a soft touch, rims it in and out, no good. Rebound, St. Joe. Backcourt pressure. Konezhny, double team, triple team. And a timeout by Eric Gaff. And St. Joe does not attack the press and is forced to burn the timeout. 30-second timeout, St. Joe will do the same. 39 seconds to play. St. Joe by one, 55-54. Hoosier Hysteria, a little preview on 96 won the ton and the Mishawaka Network. Hello, cavemen. It's Dr. Joe Winnack with Winnack Family Orthodontics. I'm excited to be a part of the caveman athletic season. Our office offers Invisalign and braces for both children and adults. Call us for your complimentary consultation today. We take our business seriously, but our ultimate goal is to put a smile on your face. For more information, visit our website at www.winnackfamilyortho.com. Yeah, so St. Joe looks like they don't want to attack this. They're looking to get fouled, but there's still three more fouls until you're going to the line. Backcourt inbounds to bars the ball, knocked away. Loose ball on the floor, Rasan steals it. But then a foul after contact that Rasan Johnson called for the region foul. St. Joe is so discombobulated on this press break, and they all look afraid to push the ball up the court. Rassan's I got news foul. for you. There's only three fouls. Backcourt inbounds to Chase Lee, and he throws it away, but the loose ball somehow carries out to Rashawn Woods. And Rashawn Woods is able to save the possession. A huge, huge break for St. Joe. St. Joe trying to give this game back to Mishawaka, almost like last year when St. Joe missed free throws down the stretch. Well, Mishawaka is the team that's missed four free throws here in the fourth quarter. Backcourt inbounds, Kadejdi triggers to Lee. And Lee almost an over back. It there was. it is. So St. Joe imploding with, with a I, huge turnover. How do you spell the word implode? St. Joe right oh, now. Oh, 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 ouch. 55 54. Right now, neither of these teams wants to win this game. Well, I, I like Mishawaka's chances right now because I think Mishawaka has more poise than St. Joe has right now. And the inbounds, Brady Fisher's pass smacked to the ground by Jace Lee. And now a Bodie Bender full timeout at 27 seconds to play. We'll be back. Mishawaka trailing by one. St. Joe 55, Mishawaka 54. This is K-Man Basketball. 96 won the ton and the Mishawaka Network. Hi, I'm Nate Zolman. In 1963, my father, Bud Zolman, began working in the tire and automotive service industry. After many years of hard work and dedication, he and my mother, Diane, founded Zolman's Tire in 1978, 45 years ago. Today, we have eight retail locations and three commercial truck tire and diesel locations. After all these years, Zolman's is still going strong, serving you and your family for three generations. Buy local, shop local. Zolman's Best One Tire and Auto Care. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Matt's one-car, two-bedroom apartment with a home office slash home gym insurance. You, yeah. We're good at Nick's SUV and farmhouse with a remodeled kitchen slash art gallery insurance. And we're good at the Wilbur suburban home with a two-car garage slash rehearsal space insurance. Have you seen my hockey socks? Have you checked your sock drawer? Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Well, focus right now on this one with 27 seconds to go. Mishawaka ball down by one coach. Yeah, I, I like Mishawaka right now, man. I think, and I said this before they called a timeout, I think they have more poise right now in this situation than St. Joe does. Fisher will inbound it, backcourt to Rasan Johnson, then he'll hand it back to Brady. Brady races up the floor, 24, down the lane, turns, Hook pass to the corner. Jackson Snyder dribbles to the free throw lane. Now down the middle of the lane. Puts on the brakes. Looks for a backdoor feed. Nothing there. Now Pritchett in the paint. Double team. Try to force it inside. Down to 11. Brady hands off to Thomas. Trey Thomas from three. Connects! Trey Thomas with a screen and a three. And the 
to walk up by two. Oh, and by the way, there's $10 to the Boys and Girls Club of St. Joe County. 57-55, Cape Bend. St. Joe with a timeout. We'll keep it here with five seconds to play. Yeah, so, and I said it. They had more boys. They had boys on that little set right there. And Trey Thomas doesn't know that he's, he can't shoot the three. He doesn't know that. <laughs> no one told him. He just goes up and drains it like he's on the playground court, man. Hey, fans, to win in sports, you have to adapt your strategy as the game changes. The same is true in the world of investments. Edward Jones advisor Ryan Watson is here to help. Call him at 574-675-0168, 675-0168, or visit his office on McKinley Avenue in Osceola. Ryan Watson, Edward Jones, yes, that Ryan Watson, the Mishawaka Cavemen Hall of Famer, member SIPC. One of the wow. things that I said about uh, the lineup construction here in the second half is I believe Trey Thomas has played the majority of the minutes here in the second half. And well deserved. And it's a big lineup now. You got 6'4 Brady Fisher, 6'4 Trey Thomas, a 6'4 Cooper Bridget. It's a big lineup. All right, Chase Kineshi races off the bench and will check in to inbound it from the baseline. And now after seeing the setup by St. Joe, Bodie Bender has just burned his final timeout, a 30-second timeout, which we will keep it right here for. 57 Cavemen, 55 St. Joe. But what a seesaw of momentum and scoring leads and droughts and scoring it's, no, it's very, It's very similar to the game last year at St. Joe. When, when St. Joe made a basket to take the lead and take the momentum, and then Mishawaka made some, some bad plays, St. Joe had an opportunity but St. Joe, uh, as I said, imploded. Mishawaka took advantage of it as a two-point lead. But I don't know why Chase Kinesley's taking the ball out of bounds. He's the best offensive player you have. He'll probably get the ball back, trust me. Chase Kinesley on the inbound. Defended on the inbounds by Rasan. Five seconds to go. Inbounds to King. King will race up the floor. The freshman in the corner. The catch and shoot from three. Chase Lee, no good! And Mishawaka wins it! And Trey Thomas is their hero, and he's being mobbed out in the center court area by a very jubilant student body. Mishawaka snaps their two-game losing skid and pulls out a thriller here at the cave. 57-55. Heck, reenact that last play for it. Yeah, no, uh, Chase Kinesny threw it in bounds and never got it back. The ball was pushed up, a, a, a little help, and uh, Jace Lee I mean, had an open shot, but on the baseline, a deep shot. But, I mean, my contention is that Chase Kinesi is your best offensive player, and I want him taking that shot. Well, the caveman with a heck of a ball game here against South Bend St. Joe. The Indians with their three-game win streak snap, Mishawaka. They put an end to their two-game losing streak. What a ball game here from the cave. Mishawaki gets their 16th win of the year, 57-55. Stay tuned. We're going to recap it on the post-game show. Coming up next, we will check scoring, statistics, and much, much more, including a post-game report with Bodie Bender, head coach for your Mishawaki Cavemen. What a ball game. Game winner, Trey Thomas. Stay tuned. Post-game show coming up next. 57-55, K-Men, you're in two with K-Men basketball. 96 won the ton and on the Mishawaka Network. 